Hi, it's Dougie Wood, and in this episode of our Microsoft Power Apps Top Tips, I'm going to be talking to you about how to start a timer in Power Apps. Now, this is a question I recently got asked by one of my clients who was trying to get started building his Canvas app and actually couldn't figure out how to make the timer start when he added it to the, the page. So that's what the first thing we're going to take a look at doing. So let's jump in. So a timer is just a control that can determine how your app responds after a certain amount of time passes. Timers, for example, uh, can determine how long a control appears uh, on a page or changes other properties of a control after a certain amount of time has passed. They're often used for things like when you've got an, uh, an application form and you want to sort of track how long it takes someone to complete the application form or uh, a, a particular training form or something like that. Now, you can make the, the timers visible to people um, or you can hide them in the background. It's up to you. Um, Often it's a political kind of thing where if you don't want the people to know that, that you're actually timing them, say for example you're timing how long it takes someone to complete a task or something like that and you're going to use that for analysis afterwards but maybe you don't want them to know about it, you don't have to make that timer visible. You can use a visibility property to hide it in the background or it might be something you do want to make sure that people are uh, aware of so that, they're, that they know that they've got only a certain amount of time because timers can be used uh, both forwards and backwards. You can use them as countdown timers as well. Well, so maybe it's something like a task or a form that you're saying you've only got 20 minutes to fill this out a little bit like a Microsoft exam where you've only got X amount of time and you can watch the time sort of going down so you know that, that when your, your time limit is going to be reached. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on insert and then I'm going to click on my input and then select on timer uh, further down. And this will add then what looks a bit like a button, and it does actually act like a button as well. It is clickable. It does have an on select property. Um, now, the very first question that I get asked about this is, how do you make this automatically start? So if you click on the play button, you'll notice that it doesn't actually start until uh, you click on it, and then it starts uh, from that point onwards. But you're not going to want your end users to click on a button just to make it start. So what you can do is actually if you select it, uh, you have a property on the right hand side called auto start. Now if you select that and then click on play, you'll notice that your timer automatically starts. So this is answering the question that we often uh, see. So further things though with um, your, your kind of uh, timer is you can see by default you've got a duration. So you, it's actually um, set to, uh, of how that, that, that is going to go to actually up to a minute. So it's actually done in milliseconds. So it's actually got 60 seconds uh, there that it's actually going to count up to. So you can play around with that duration. Um, you've also got things like um, uh, some of these properties on the left hand like what to do on select. So when you select the button, what does it do? Uh, or what to do on the timer end. So say, for example, if this was every 60 seconds, at the end of that, um, if it's going to repeat itself, so you can turn on a repeat, what does it do at the end of the 60 seconds? So I've also seen people using this type of thing in the past for um, using kind of like offline f features and things like that. So every 60 seconds, the app is checking itself as if it's online or not. Um, and if it's not, then it might want to flag a message to someone and say, by the way, this app is, is offline and it's got reduced features. And you might then use a set of variables to hide things or disable certain buttons and features which you need to be online to use, for example. So just to show you how this, this could potentially work is what I'm going to do is um, on... Um, on select, we're going to treat this as almost like a stop clock button, and then that's going to, going to log that time into a variable, which we could pass into a form, or we could patch into a SharePoint list, or Dataverse, or any other data source that we're working with. So in my on select property, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say set, so the user set, and then I'm going to use, say, var time, and then all I'm going to do is then log in timer1 dot value into this and then what that's what's going to do when you click on that button so I'm going to make this obvious uh, by putting in a label which is going to say stop clock and then I'm going to put a label in underneath it which is going to show us the value of that variable so I'm just going to put in here our time so now when I click on play 
you can see the timer will then start uh, ticking over and as I click on the stop clock button it will stop and then it'll log the, the time into here so remember that this is in um, the milliseconds so you would need to do some calculations to round this up for example if you wanted to only show the amount of seconds or if you wanted to convert it into minutes for example but the point being is you've then got that time in a variable that you can then go and do what you want with it stick it into a form stick, patch it back into a database you've then got that time stored I hope you found that video useful, all about how we can start our timers and what timers mean and what we can do with them. Um, if you've got any questions, please use the comments below. Uh, do like this video and subscribe for further Microsoft Power Apps tips.